What is going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. This is the last stream before 2023 is here, which is just absolutely insane. I hope everybody had an awesome Christmas or whatever holiday you partake in. Um, I had mentioned last Wednesday that we are going to be attempting a ham for the first time, uh, similarly to how we attempted a turkey for the first time, and the ham turned out awesome. We had ham for two dinners and breakfast, and we froze a bunch of ham. So if anyone's looking for a killer ham recipe, I uh, it's only four ingredients other than, yeah, it's basically just four ingredients for the glaze, and it turned out incredible, and it was super simple. So uh, I hope everyone is doing awesome. Let's see if Daniel can release some magic smoke today. Do not jinx me with that, please. <laughs> so far, this has been a non-smoky build, and I hope to keep it that way. Um, the ham was smoked, and that's the only smoked I want. Uh, what is going on everyone? So, uh, today's stream is going to probably be a little bit shorter than the last few weeks. Um, Aaron's parents are in town, my in-laws, and I, uh, originally wasn't going to stream, but wanted to at least do, maintain the Wednesday stream like we've been doing. So, um, we're going to stream for, the game plan is two hours. That's the target. We'll see if I can stick to that, but that's the, uh, the plan right now. Um, just as a reminder to everyone, and I will announce it in the Discord, next Wednesday, the stream will be on the main ModBot channel, and it's going to be the 100,000 subscriber giveaway stream, which is going to be insane. There is a ton of incredible prizes, and even if there is more people there than normal, there's so many prizes, so you had definitely have a good chance of hopefully getting something. So, uh, Aaron will be there. Uh, I don't want to give away too much, but it, it'll be cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited. Hey, Steve is here nice and early. What's going on? Pi, hi. Um, yeah, I hope everyone's doing great. When are you starting uh, <laughs> when are you starting a mukbang? You love food. Uh, I don't have any plans of it, but I will say we do talk about food a lot on this channel. Um, I don't know if that's what every other streamer does around the four hour mark, but I tend to get really hungry and then someone starts talking about food and then, and then uh, yeah, we ended up going on a rant. So uh, anyways, we are continuing today with the Zero G build that we've been working on. This will be the fourth stream uh, on the Zero G Mercury 1.1 build. The base the, the base conversion is completely done. Uh, we pretty much wrapped it up last week, but the wires, um, I had to, I thought I gave myself plenty of slack. I was mistaken. So if you look down here, um, this is where the original wires ended, and I had to basically cut all my crimps, solder additional wires, and then add more um, uh, mesh, and then got it all wired up. So I did that last week. Um, on stream, we left off trying to flash Clipper, but my micro SD cards were being a jerk. I don't know why they weren't working the way they should, but uh, we are all up and running. I actually showed, I posted a test cube. I don't get it. In this direction, there's no wobble. It's perfectly rigid. And then I turn it this way, and it's like Wobbleville. So it's... <laughs> Very weird to me what's going on in this frame, because I did check it, and again, in this direction, there is no play at all. And I move it like this, and then there's wobbles. So I don't know if it's my table or what, what the deal is. So um, let's first plug everything in. Right now, the Raspberry Pi is just plugged into, you can kind of see it back here. Um, it's just plugged into the wall outlet. Eventually, when I do the electronics for the Hydra, um, we're going to be using the CB1 with the uh, Big Tree Tech M8P, so we won't be needing a Raspberry Pi at all. This is just temporary, um, so that way we've got everything working. So let's go ahead and power on this printer, uh, and I'll show you guys kind of quickly what I've done on the firmware side um, so far. It's very, very little. Most of it was just a stock um, Ender 5, where are we, outlet, uh, sideways? Nope, that's not right. Oh, come on. There we go. Most of it was just the stock Ender 5 config. Uh, I goofed. I need to turn this off one more time. Uh, put it on the quartz slab. Yeah, it, on the quartz slab, that's what we built it on. So all of the config or all of the actual assembly of the frame should be squared with that. Also, um, I swapped out the furniture in the corner. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm finally taking the dive and I started to print out, hold this up here, um, little Gridfinity bases. I am so tired of how unorganized I am. Um, and so my goal is to start organizing things much better. So um, took the plunge, got rid of one of the carts. If I end up liking this setup, then I might end up doing uh, another one over here. The only issue is, is that 
I had hoped without the casters, this new piece of furniture would be semi-rigid. It is the most wobbly piece of furniture ever. So um, I took my uh, circular saw and cut a piece of three quarter inch ply that I then, um, well, I, I kept the cardboard backing, but I added that in addition and having it up against the wall, it's fairly rigid now. Uh, but yeah, when I first built the thing, it was just like teeter tottering, which is not what I want. Um, we, we talked about this a little while back, but the X1 carbon used to be on this cart here and I printed out a part on here, then I printed it on here and the waviness was insane. The difference, it, it just was, uh, really causing a lot of vibrations, even with the input shaping and calibrating it in that spot. So hopefully this will be better. So far, the things I've printed on the P1P have been solid in that location. Um, so time will tell, I guess, how that does. Uh, hey, John, uh, bolt the printer. <laughs> I move things around too much to bolt the printer to the wall. <laughs> that isn't a bad idea. If it was Pooch, he would say just to French cleat it. Okay, why are we not? Let me, um... Oh, <laughs> before I go further, I should probably say... Massive thank you to Fabrico. Uh, Fabrico sponsored this build with their kit, uh, as well as the Hydra kit. I need to reach out because I was told a couple weeks ago that the, uh, I thought all the versions were going to be available and they're still showing that only the non-rail versions are available. And uh, I haven't talked to Fabrico since, it's been about a week and a half now. So I'm not really sure what the latest is. Maybe, um, uh, maybe Scott or Dutch knows a little bit more about what's going on with the status of that. But um, Fabrico did provide this kit. Uh, I also, I purchased the Clicky Probe kit from Fabrico that we're gonna be installing today. Um, you can source this yourself, but I, it's just simpler for me. This kit comes with everything that you need. Uh, so if you don't have, you know, like the micro switch and all these magnets already, then this will give you everything you need. Oh, okay, maybe he is out of rails and that makes sense. Uh, Woohoo, my, fa uh, my Fabrico Zero-G platform and wham-bam magnet. Oh, sick. That is awesome. Uh, my bamboo went straight to the garage on a Husky workbench. It's so damn loud. It is very loud. Um, I, I will agree with that. Um, I don't know that there's much you could do about the noise. I just think that, I mean, maybe silent drivers, but even with the drivers, the fan, when you, when you kick on that auxiliary fan on the side here, it's just chucking so much air that it makes a bunch of noise. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm curious to see if I, if I put a foam pad down with, um, a paver, if that helps with a little bit of the noise. So that way it's not, um, basically resonating through the furniture, but so far it doesn't bug me that much. I just, I can't do any sort of video audio work with that thing in here. So we'll see. Uh, Hey, hacks potato. What's going on? Happy or happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you too. Okay. So let's take a look at the. Uh, we've got an error here. That's my config. Let's quickly restart this and see if we can connect. Printer is, there we go. Yay. We've got our interface. So let's, let's home this really quickly here. The issue, I had one issue. I don't know if, um, I just didn't print it out or if the Mercury dot one dot one is intended to definitely have auto leveling, but the Z switch, you can hardly see it, but the Z switch right here, uh, was far too long uh, for the new tool head. It probably also depends on which tool head you go with, uh, but the Revo nozzle. So I basically, I ripped off the, um, I moved it so that way it's not touching. And you guys can't see that, can you? Let's see, drop it down like that. We have autofocus on, we do. Let me, one second here, uh, manual focus. I'm learning, I am learning. Let's see, that doesn't look better. It also doesn't look better. There we go. Um, so normally the switch goes down to this little guy and this is what triggers your ZN stop. I dropped it down as low as it could get, still was too high. So then I moved it to the side so it hits this plate right here, still was too high. So then I removed the lever and now it's just right. Um, the Mercury one is uh, mostly intended for Beale Touch or Clicky. Yeah, the, the reason why I, I just wanted to get this working for the sake of um, testing out a print last week, but I anticipate if you're doing this mod, you're, you should absolutely be doing some kind of auto bed leveling. So we're going to be doing the clicky, but just to show that everything is working. Let me see. Can I raise you guys up a little bit? There we go. Let's quickly home our printer. Look at it. It's moving. <laughs> oh, nice. There's a CR touch option. Hey, Lisa. You can always build an acoustic enclosure around the printer. Yeah, I am. Um, 
I anticipate that they will probably try to work on something uh, for the noise because I feel like that is one complaint quite a few people give. I, I mean, it's definitely not like your uh, slow 60, 70, 80 millimeter a second um, dynamic driver printing printer. It's, it's definitely not. So, hey, what's up, alien? Zombies in the house. I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. Okay, so we home successfully. And then just so everyone can see, currently this is a completely stock config that I pulled from the Clipper uh, repository for the Ender 5. And I just followed the instructions here. Um, the only things I have changed are the, where are we at? Mm -mm -mm, printer. Uh, I switched the kinematics from, I believe the default was Cartesian to Core XY. And I had to invert, um, I had to invert the logic on these steppers. Um, I know that Dutch has, where is it? Let me see if I can find this really quick here. Uh, 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 one second, everybody. I think it was under, was it under electronics or was it under firmware in the, uh, 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 I think it was under, is there a firmware? Am I missing it? Filament clipper. Uh, and then I go here. I think it was under a pinned message. There we go. Yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't Dutch. It was maze. Um, there we go. So I, I just referenced this. This is typically what uh, is also in the Voron configurator. Uh, so that way you can kind of see. But initially, I had the plugs inverted. Uh, so it was doing right forward. So it says there's no possible configuration here. Just invert direction. So I inverted the directions. And then I had to reverse the logic of one of the stepper motors. And then everything has been working well. So um, again, today we are moving on to the clicky. Uh, I am sure I'm going to need some help. I've only done this once and it was the servo version of it for the switch wire. And it took me a very long time to get it working. I don't really remember all the things I tried to get it working, but I know that it was not a very smooth, uh, yep. Credit to Warren for this. Yeah. Uh, it was not, I'll be creating a page on the docs that'll tell you what to do with the config soon. Nice. I'm excited to see, even after I'm done with this Dutch, I just want to see the docs. I'm a huge fan of the, the docs, the current a uh, bit of docs that are in there are so nice. And I just have a major appreciation for quality documentation. So I'll be excited to see that. Um, so the things I've done so far is I went over to the Clicky Probe um, website or their GitHub last night, uh, just to get a brief reminder of sort of how things go. Uh, again, this is the first time I've done an actual um, Clicky. The other one was called the like uh, Quick, Quick Draw, I think. I think it was the Quick Draw mod is what I did before which is very similar. It still uses magnets, but it's just slightly different. Uh, and then also uh, Turtle, who's probably at work right now. Um, he, can I find Turtle's, uh, 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 it was in, I can bring this over here, it's fine. Okay, um, it would have been in community mods. Where are we building, building? dev modifications community and then it was under here there we go um so turtle put together a nice little um kind of write up you can't really see that though well can you how do i pop this out and not make it a side thing can i do that follow post open in full view there we go there we go okay hey what's up luke nice is in the house Rod. Um, so yeah, uh, Turtle put together a really awesome write-up that basically has everything from um, how you need to configure it, changes you need to make if you're switching from a BL Touch to that. I I'm sure I'll still run into issues because I just I'm already in my mind thinking that's what's going to happen. But there's different um, shrouds for the Clicky Probe depending on your tool head. I think I went with default if I remember correctly. Um, it's got the bomb, which again, all these things are in that clicky kit and yeah, that's basically it. So, um, let's start, let's start, let's do this. Let's go side cam. I'm going to turn off the printer. I'm going to unplug it. Merry new year. What's everybody doing for, uh, what's everybody doing for new year's? New year's is actually, um, Aaron and I's anniversary. Oops. I should probably unplug the power cable from the back to not. Thank you, uh, it's our seven year anniversary. And um, uh, Aaron's parents, their flight, they were gonna leave on Thursday and their flight got canceled due to weather. So they're gonna be here for New Year's. So I don't know, as far as food goes, 
I'm not really sure what we're gonna do. Um, growing up, I don't what, like. Okay, damn it, we do always talk about food. <laughs> um, growing up, my family always did um, for New Year's lobster. Uh, we like don't. I mean, lobster is soup. Oh, also, damn. Also, I'm trying out the new sugar, uh, sugar-free monster that everyone talked about. I will say it's okay. It, it's definitely, um, it's scratching the itch, but it's definitely not the same as my really sugary, um, mango, mango one and all that. But hey, if it, if it gets me at least most of, most of the monster experience without having a bunch of sugar, that's probably okay. So let me go here and change this back to autofocus and 12 hour Dutch oven lasagna. No, 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 no. Hey, what's up, Simple? Hey, thank you, thank you very much. Um, are we doing front clicky, side clicky, or rear clicky? Are you talking about the mounting point, Ted, as far as the dock? The answer to that is I don't know. Uh, I didn't see I didn't see any recommendation as far as location of mounting. Uh, let's see, location to park the tool head. Yeah, I don't know what's recommended with this. If uh, okay, Dutch says rear. We're doing rear. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fan. It's a fan duct mount. So I guess that makes sense that we're going to the back. Um, so let's start with this. We've got our magnets. I think the first thing, first thing we need to do is install the switch. I'm also going to be looking at chat to correct me if I do anything uh, silly, because again, I've done, I've done this once and it took, it took me a very long time and it was off stream. So first thing we need to do is this, um, this is on, was it on run? I think this is an Om Omron switch, uh, but we don't want the little lever on here. So typically you can just pinch it and kind of pop it out. Let's see if I can do that. Nope. Um, I'm gonna grab some tweezers, squeeze it. You can call me Dan and I'm aware it's hard to remember since it's not my display name. I will do my best. The good news is, is that my name is Daniel. Um, so, there we go. All right, so we've got that removed. Now we just have the switch. Um, the good news is my name's Daniel, so it shouldn't be that hard to remember. <laughs> there is a lot of Dan's in chat, Alien. I don't know if you remember, um, it was a while back. I think there was like four of us in chat. It was nuts. Here's a paper title. Artificial sweetener produces the counterintuitive effect of inducing metabolic derangement. <laughs> My name is actually Daniel too. <laughs> That's so funny. There's another Dan. <laughs> it's so funny because when we moved in and we met the neighbor across the street, his name is also Dan. And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> okay. So we are going to be pressing the switch into this part. Um, you want the arrow to align with the actual switch. So the switch needs to be on the right side. Um, I looked at the legs of this and I looked at the holes here and they are, I don't know if it was just a tolerance thing or if they're intentionally too small, but I have my concerns that this will be able to go through here. Uh, and I did see in the clicky instructions that they recommend using a one and a half millimeter drill bit to clean it up. So uh, that is what we're gonna do. Uh, seriously, just don't drink sodas. Yeah, I've well, prior to the doctor telling me I needed to chill out on sugars, I was having like a Dr. Pepper a day, and now uh, I have one a week, so I I'm working on it. I'm definitely working on it. So I'm just gonna use my hand to see if I can slowly... I have a drill right here, um, but I'm hoping I can just use my hand to do this. Uh, what orientation did I print the... Probe. That's a great question. Uh, it looks like it was printed flat, like that. Which I don't know if that's the orientation that downloaded in or if I auto arranged it or what the deal is. I don't know. Uh, I used to drink like three liters of Mountain Dew a day when I was young. Never drank plain water. Wow. The Dr. Pepper day came to the real doctor. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, when I was living with my buddy, um, Okay, maybe I am going to... I, I think I am going to hook this up to the drill and just put it on a... Try to go as slow as we possibly can. Or it's... I guess it's a screwdriver more than a drill. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can do this.
Yeah, that definitely looks, that looks a little better. <clears throat> now I drink a gallon and a half of water a day. Oh my gosh. Uh, if you can't find metric, uh, 16 inch drill. Yeah, these should be metric actually. I used to play World of Warcraft all day and drink a 12 pack. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I never, um, I never did that. So my, um, my parents, I grew up in a household that was like really, I would say pretty healthy as far as their eating habits. Um, and it wasn't, into, I don't know if it was like rebelling or what, but once I had the freedom to eat and drink what I wanted to as an adult, I uh, sort of derailed a little bit from that uh, eating. And then my, my best friend, uh, when I lived with him, he is a Dr. Pepper addict. <laughs> not, it's not so much anymore, uh, but man, there was always like, like multiple packs and packs of Dr. Pepper in the house. And I lived with him for a few years and sort of also, um, into that habit as well okay so hopefully this will now fit through okay that is actually looser than i would like hmm okay well i'm going to end up i'm going to end up um i think putting a little bit of I think I'm gonna end up putting a little bit of exposed wire in here and then a dab of glue with the magnet. So hopefully that will also help keep this in place. I also imagine that I can put a little bit of glue on the center post um, since that's not actually gonna be connected to anything to hold it in place. But yeah, I'm not sure one and a half millimeter was actually the best size. Worst case scenario, this is just the part that's gonna be docked. I could always make another one later, but we'll start with this and see how it goes. Uh, as far as wire goes, what wire do I want to use? I think I've just got, uh, I thought I had some wire over here. Uh, where, where would I, I quickly threw things into here to make it look like my room was more organized. So, um, I've actually got really thick wire in the garage too. And if I'm just cutting, nope, I don't want to cut that. Of course, I don't know what happened to the wire in here. Uh, let's check one last spot and then I'll run out in the garage. Uh, super glue plus wire should be good. Uh, forget what I just said, the switch will be screwed. Oh, wait, you're right. The switch is gonna, oh, I'm a goofball. Thank you, I completely forgot about that. It doesn't matter, duh. We just want the legs to be able to go through cleanly. Okay, yeah. So we are, we will um, still use some wire, but I don't have to worry about that so much. Okay, so yeah, let's just screw the switch in place then. They are uh, self-tapping, here they are. So we're gonna use, uh, these are M2 by 10 self-tapping screws. These will hold the switch in place. Hey, what's up, Maze? Christmas was really good. It went by, uh, it went by really fast, like really, really quickly. Um, <laughs> so Christmas Eve, which it's, my mom is from Sweden and because of that, she grew up, um, celebrating Christmas on Christmas Eve. And so I always did that my whole life. Um, but we didn't do that this year. Um, let me grab a baby screwdriver. Where did I? <laughs> This is, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to this new organization. I need to get it all dialed in because I'm so used to things being messy, but knowing where things are that now that I have things in drawers, I'm like, where's that thing that's always out? Um, so we didn't end up really celebrating on Christmas Eve. Uh, we, on Christmas day, Aaron's parents were supposed to land at, um, you're supposed to land at 2.45, I think. And their flight got pretty heavily delayed due to uh, they're not being enough staff for the airlines. And so they came in, I think we picked them around five o'clock in the airport and then came back, chilled for a little bit and then pretty much just went to cooking. Um, the ham was my primary focus and uh, that took a couple of hours, but it was really simple. Not a lot of ingredients. Um, it was just constantly every 10 minutes I had an alarm set so that way I could get a little a ladle and apply more of the, the uh, honey glaze to it to keep it from or to keep it soaking and also keep the ham from drying out. So, uh, but it was, it was really fun. It was nice. It was, it's been awesome having them here. Okay. I'm not going to over tighten this because it's again, self tapping. This is just a little switch. Just kind of hand tighten it. And that should be good. 
Uh, this is just a normal clicky. I think that I, I haven't used the NG. I did see it in the GitHub though. I think the primary difference is that you don't need glue, right? They're basically um, kind of sandwiched in the magnets a little bit differently. So that way they don't have the ability to pop out. Uh, we had a driving ban on Christmas Eve. Driving ban. What, do you, what is that? Driving ban. Uh, if your mom is Swedish, when uh, is... God, time. I don't know what that is. <laughs> she, uh, the only things we really celebrated is I used to go visit my family in... Uh, I have some family in Gothenburg, um, some in Urist, and we'd always go during summertime. So I did get to celebrate the uh, midsummer, which is so fun. Uh, like we, my whole family would come out and they build the big midsummer pole and do the crazy dances and have food. It was so much fun. Uh, NG is no, oh, no glue, duh. Uh, Swedish coffee and snack time. Oh, okay. Yeah, my mom, <laughs> my mom definitely does that. <laughs> Just, she doesn't call it that. Have you had glug, uh, glug? They were flying Southwest. They, they were flying Southwest CNC. I actually sent Aaron a video this morning that was a TikTok of the Southwest trip answering the phone, but it was a Corgi. <laughs> Super funny. Okay, back to what I was doing before I got distracted and started talking about corgis and other things. How was um, how was your Christmas, Maze? Blizzard conditions, no dry. Oh, wow. That's nuts. Yeah, I think I'm going to run to the garage and grab... I've got some thick wire out there that I can just cut a little bit of the strand off and just shove a few strands in there just to help with the... Uh, connectivity it might not be necessary but that's what I did on the other probe and um, it's worked really well so it, I just want to make sure that it works the same way it did so let me really quickly do that give me one second I'll be right back everyone hey Rob some reason again um didn't realize that the sleeving was going to be as thick as it was so i can't use it for quite as many things as i would have liked but um it should be good for this just to cut off some of the end take out a little bit of the, the wire and uh shove some in there <clears throat> i do want to get to gluing soon though because i know i'm gonna need to let it dry for a little bit Okay, that should be plenty. So I'm just cutting off a little bit. I'm going to take um, these little flush cutters like this. And I am just going to shove. That might be excessive. This wire sucks compared to the wire I've used before. Um, Basically just shoving a little bit in there, but that's not exactly how I wanted it to go. Um, I have just want this gentleman. Oh, sorry, Mono. Um, all right, let me back check for two seconds here. Okay, you said, question, I have any 3 offer delivery and I've never printed before and super important things you think is good to know. Um, I have a video called five things I wish I knew or five beginner tips on my channel. Um, I would watch that. Um, the main things really are, if you're new to 3D printing, like learn how to level the bed, start slow, start with PLA. Um, don't do any modding whatsoever until you verify that your hardware works out of the box. There's, I mean, Crowdy makes fine printers and they're a great entry point for a lot of people, but they're not exactly known for the highest level of QC. And even for myself, nine out of 10 times, I will run a printer completely stock um, for a little bit just to verify that everything is working and that I didn't screw anything up. So that's that's my recommendation. But yeah, I mean, have fun with it. Don't, you, it's gonna be a fun and frustrating experience and just know that. I mean, it's the same way for all of us. Okay, I need something to shove this in here a little bit more. But yeah, that's, uh, that's 
probably it. I'm sure there's more. I would watch that video I did. I, the video will be a lot more structured than me rambling off some stuff, but those are, those are some main things. It's all about the first layer. Yeah, it is. That, that uh, bed leveling and first layer is, I would say, without a doubt, the biggest struggle for anybody starting off with 3D printing. Hell, it's even an issue for people not starting off with 3D printing. Like, it still just can be a frustrating experience. Um, that's why, uh, you know, watching videos on it, gaining some familiarity, um, sticking with PLA, at least at the beginning. It, it's all about, like, when you start something new, I think it's important to get a win early on. Uh, otherwise, if you just get frustrated so quickly, you know, you might not want to continue. So I think it's a good idea to start simple and, and get a couple wins under your belt before, uh, before you get, you know, get a little crazy. Okay, that has a little bit of... I think that's fine. I think we're good on that. Um, hey, what's up, Zarin? I haven't seen you in a while, man. Didn't know you needed a bit of cable in there. Mine works without... You, you don't need it. You, you don't, Death. It, it's totally optional. I just did it in my first build, and it's worked great, and so... Um, yeah, I also missed, um, uh, I asked Maze how Christmas was, and then I, there we go. We hosted a classic, a dinner classic with slow cooked, oh, that's right, that's right, you said rabbit, oh gosh, that sounds awesome. That's right, we were talking about food last week, as we do, and you had mentioned that you were having rabbit. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear it went really well. Uh, yes, was busy, now COVID, oh god. I'm really sorry to hear that. Okay, so I'm throwing these on here because the first two we want to be in the same direction. Um, so I'm going to put a drop of glue. Yeah, okay. The only glue I have, this is the glue that I want to use. Uh, it's completely welded shut. The glue inside is still good and I just haven't had the time to <laughs> like snip it and fix it. So we're gonna use this runny stuff, which I don't like nearly as much, but it's um, it was recommended to me uh, and, uh, but, uh, gosh, I can't remember. It's Greg, but what's his channel? Greg, Greg's, uh, Greg's, Greg's Corner? Greg's, Greg Hubert, I think is his last name. Um, I'm sorry, Greg, but he recommended this stuff to me and it's runnier than I would like, but it doesn't ever attach, it doesn't get stuck to your lid and I love it so much. Greg's Maker Corner, thank you. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, those magnets need a smiley mouth. Greg's Maker Corner. Yeah, it's Greg's Maker Corner. I should know that. It's been a it's been a minute. I feel like he hasn't made as much uh, videos lately, and I I think on Twitter he just goes by Greg, and that's usually uh, where I talk to him on. So I, I've got it mixed up. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here. No, that's a terrible idea. I think I should put a little bit of glue into the slot and then put the magnet in. If I put the glue on the magnet, this stuff's so runny that it's instantly going to bond to my finger, and I'm going to be really bummed out. So we're going to. Oh geez, okay. That was tons of glue. Okay, that's not doing what I want either. Okay, that should be in place. Once I get the second one in, we'll check for continuity to make sure I didn't screw anything up royally. Uh, I did not print the jig, Delmar. The reason why I did not print the jig is that I think I downloaded the zip file from uh, the turtle had ho posted, and I don't think the jig was in there. And I didn't know about the jig until yesterday I was reading in the GitHub. Um, it's my fault, <laughs> 100%. I'm trying to see here. Was there a jig in this? Clicky try horn. Doc, doc, doc. No, there wasn't. Um, yeah, no jig. Okay, that worked okay though. I, I do need to put a little bit more of the wire in the other one though, just to get it back to where it was. But I think we're be we're gonna be okay with that. Um, yeah, let's cut a little bit more wire off. Hey, what's up, Remy? Uh, we did have that crazy cold. Get some glue, uh, good CA glue activator. Yeah, I have. Um, so in the garage for the CNC stuff, I do have um, probably the same bottle that I have that's closed up in here. And it has a activator along with it. Um, the things I don't like about it is, man, is it fumey. Uh, and also, it's sometimes too aggressive for me. Um, I learned my lesson when I was trying to bond together two massive PLA parts. And I sprayed the activator on one side, pressed them together, and was quickly trying to do one adjustment. And, it, and I couldn't. It was done. That was it. 
And so then I spent the next hour sanding. Um, and so after that, I'm, I'm like kind of sketched uh, to use the activator in any instances where I'm really trying to line stuff up. But I do use it for like the CNC stuff um, for clamping things down. I'll, I'll, a blue painter's tape and um, come on wires. I use blue painter's tape <clears throat> and then uh, glue on one side and then on the other side, blue painter's tape on the material I'm gonna be working with and then the activator to bond it really quickly. It's great stuff. I just, again, for just applications where something needs to be sort of accurately placed, I'm, I don't trust myself after that experience. It was not, again, it was out there in the cold just sanding for, for a while. Oh, come on, wires. Yeah, I probably would recommend not doing this if this isn't needed. It's um, not super fun. Okay. Ooh. I want to make sure that the uh, switch does not get stuck from the glue because it's so runny that it can run easily into that slot. So, all right, let's try this again. Um, I'm going to try to lean the glue towards the side that that's not what I wanted to do. That was a ton of glue. It did not go, it did not go the way that I wanted to. Finger is now stuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, super glue. There we go. Okay. We may have screwed up the switch. It sucks if we did. I'm going to take some IPA and see if I can wipe off from the switch. Yeah, I um, I would not recommend using super glue this runny for doing this. I just don't. Yeah, I think we screwed it up. All right, we are off to a great start. The good news is that I do have another switch um i do have another switch i <laughs> my last so my first experience with clicky was i screwed up at least one or two switches um so i do have another um let's go ahead and unscrew this and see if i can shove in the other switch i think we'll be okay i kind of expected that to happen um let's see this is what we need on my cl uh, clickies i've soldered a short piece of wire to the switch leg uh, fed it through the housing, pulled off the wire jacket and fan the shroud. That's a way better idea, uh, Ted. That that is that is a way better idea than what I did. So let's see if we can get this one out while it's keeping our magnets in. It's gonna be tough with the glue. I don't know if we'll be able to. I'm gonna try to shove something inside of the hole on here. I don't wanna use a nice Allen key. We did it. Okay, so magnets are still in, that's good. Switch is out, I think we'll be okay. I think we can just do a clean swap here and again, I bought, I bought extra switches because the last time I did this, I damaged uh, one or two of them. So yeah, just in case I've... <laughs> so Pi, um, Pi is local to me out here and uh, Pi is my lifesaver. Uh, the last time I was doing this, I actually messaged him and said, uh, hey, I screwed up <laughs> and he had two extra switches. So thank you. <laughs> I do have three though. I learned, I learned from last time um, that I will very likely not get it right the first time. But yeah, I do think that in this situation, the uh, biggest flaw I have is that I'm using really runny glue. Okay, let's see if we can shove this back in. There we go. Cool. All right, so now we will verify though, once this is in that we still have continuity, but hopefully we'll be fine. Uh, as, let's see, that's why I have 20. <laughs> 
Uh, as I'm watching this, I set a print to start and bam, the Beetle Touch just died. Oh no. I don't have, it's weird, I don't have a lot of experience with Beetle Touches. Um, the majority of them were knockoffs or like the CR Touch now. Oh, come on, guy. One second. Yeah, I have I have a BL Touch somewhere over here that I was planning on installing, uh, I think in this, but once I saw there was a clicky mod and that's just worked so well for me, uh, I just, I would prefer the clicky mod. Uh, did you see the clicky PCBs from Fabrico? I did. Um, <laughs> I should probably be using the clicky PCB. I just think it has a slightly different mounting point possibly. Um, but yeah, these, these are awesome. So basically, uh, instead of having to use glue, the magnets have holes in them. Uh, so you just screw the magnet into the part. So yeah, the clicky PCBs are something I highly recommend. I think that this kit is meant to go in a Voron, like uh, it replaces the bigger Omron inductive probe. But yeah, I, I do think that is a very cool thing uh, to have. 3D Touch is a bit of a gamble. I had two that just worked. Another, I'm pretty sure I saw someone that did a video on the 3D Touch. Uh, okay, our probe is working great. Um, pretty sure I saw someone that did a video on the, um, what is it? What did I just call it? 3D touch. And I don't think it was quite as accurate or, or, rep oh, that was weird. It must be the metal underneath it. Um, I don't think it was quite as accurate or repeatable as the uh, authentic thing. And I've had some terrible experiences. That's a cracked magnet. Um, I had some terrible experiences with, um, bad bed leveling early, early on a lot of the budget 3d printers were trying to have auto bed leveling to offer it you know as a as a nice feature uh but they were just so bad so i, I kind of have scars from that like i i would rather have um oh damn one second i need to focus uh... oh come on you're gonna go there we go one second Oops. Um, I had such bad experiences early on that I would rather have no bed leveling and just manually use a piece of paper than some of the uh, poor systems out there. But I know people do use them, so clearly there's some um, some things that aren't so bad about them. But yeah, I just I have uh, I have concerns. Uh, Mies. Oh, hey, Mies. Happy December twenty eighth. It's almost. Uh, yeah, almost New Year's. I asked this earlier. I didn't see anyone answer. What's everyone doing for New Year's? Has anybody got any sort of like family traditions or traditions with friends or? I, I never really did much for New Year's other than my family would, uh, like I said, we would get like one or two lobsters and make that with uh, butter and garlic. And then we would typically watch like some form of countdown. They had make music video countdowns and stuff like that. But we never really did a whole lot. Uh, sleeping. I like it, Alien. I love it. We, um... Aaron and I a couple years ago, or at least Aaron, did not make it to midnight. We we fell asleep as well. Hey, BBs. Friends invited me. Nice. Uh, bed tramming and leveling are quite different, though. You can get a tram bed, but it won't be flat. 100%. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're absolutely right, zombie. Especially when we're talking about the... Um, well, especially when we're talking about the thin PCB ones that come in a lot of the Crowdy printers. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I've had some that are so bad that it doesn't matter how accurate or, or how much I try to compensate with leveling, I can only print on a small segment of it because once I get beyond that, it's too high or too low and there's nothing I can do about it. So yeah, yeah, 100%, that is, that is, that's a good point. Uh, we'll probably be letting off fireworks over the ocean. Oh, that's, that's super cool. Uh, everything I've tried to do so far this week has been a disaster, so I'm doing nothing. I can't screw that up. <laughs> That's a very safe option. Uh, I'm playing with a 2.4 even more, up to 60 hours in six days. That's awesome. I'm stoked that you got that uh, up and running, Alien. You, you were pretty damn quick once you got everything in. Play card and board games with the kids, watch a good movie if we can find one. Awesome. Uh, got my filament. Uh, thank you. Oh, nice. Tesla, sweet. I now just have to get Clipper running on this heap of junk Ender 5. <laughs> is it is it a stock Ender 5 or did you, uh, are you working on doing the conversion for it? Okay, so this is probably okay for right now. Let's move on to the next thing, which is um, wires. Okay, so we will need the printer on the table for this. Um, 
we also need to, now that I think about it, we need to install magnets into this side piece. I don't think it matters the direction as long as it will grab the magnet on the back here. Yeah. Hey Vader, uh, no worries. I'll be asleep by 10 on New Year's. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, put a dab of glue inside here. Uh, this one will be a little bit harder to press in. I might need to, I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. This is the runniest super glue ever made. Ah. I just love that it does, oh, I lost a magnet. Oh shit, where'd he go, where'd he go, here we are. No dog hair on my hands, so it will get sucked in the super glue forever. Oh no, what did we do? <laughs> uh, there we go. Aaron, Aaron finds it funny that, um, cause I, not always, but I'll usually have Aaron watch my YouTube videos before I post them, uh, or before I upload them, schedule them. And, uh, she laughs because like in every video, she always can spot a dog hair. I just, no matter what. And I actually, um, let's see here, let me grab napkins. Um, I now use, is it in the garage or is it in here? I think it's in here. So someone recommended this on Twitter for cleaning out electronics and I highly recommend it to anybody. Um, I'll show this off, little rant here, but I, not sponsored, but huge fan of this. I got it for my birthday from my parents, a duster. <laughs> um, this thing, uh, so it's a, like, instead of using compressed air to clean electronics, you just use this. Super high power, um, really awesome, I, I love it. But I've also used it now because of how much dust and dog hair and crap we have flying around. Um, I have now, it's not drip glue on my desk, I've now started using it before I do footage of a printer to quickly dust off the printer. And even with that, there still ends up being like one stray monkey hair sticking out of something. You should absolutely get a Dutch. Uh, like like it, is, it is disgustingly powerful. Um, also, compressed air is so expensive that whenever I have a can of it, I treat it like it's gold and I have to like really think about when I want to use it. So um, yeah, I 100% recommend, oh shoot, I got it. Oh, you know what? This doesn't have to be conductive though. So even if there's a little bit of glue, it shouldn't matter. Um, yeah, it's, watch, I'm gonna plug this thing in. <laughs> this has now become a uh, duster demo. But like, um, man, what's something like heavy that I can try to blow off? I don't think it'll blow a stepper motor, but maybe it'll, it, it's nuts. Let's see, hold on. Um, okay, so that's number, that's, okay, yeah, yeah. That's just, that's the low power. That's low power, right? And then this is high power. I mean, it's a step, like the air can, it's nuts, man. Uh, compressed air cans are fun for freezing bugs. <laughs> yeah, um, compressed air for me, it always freezes my hand, no matter what, if I don't tilt it, I, it still ends up freezing. I just, I mean, there's a time and place for compressed air uh, in a can, don't get me wrong, but this thing is incredible. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. I, someone. Uncle Jesse, I think, tweeted uh, months and months back about like, hey, what do people think about these cleaners? And um, that's when I started looking into them and I threw it on my Amazon wish list. And then for my birthday, my parents were like, what do you want? And I was like, ah, there's some things in my Amazon wish list that I really would like. And that showed up and I'm I'm obsessed. <laughs> I, I think it is absolutely worth uh, worth it. Um, I, I just used my airbrush with a clean tool. Oh, nice. Yeah, there you go. Um, should have shown to me before Christmas time. <laughs> yeah, I um, I need to make everyone, well, not everyone, but there was quite a few people that made videos on like their tools that they liked doing. Like I know Nero did one and I think there was one or two other people. Um, and I was going to, but I was like, eh, I'll wait. Um, I should probably do it next year, maybe around Black Friday. <laughs> Some of the kind of random tools that I like, uh, because I don't think that that duster is on everybody's list of random tools, but even for 3D printing, cleaning out the... Um, cleaning out the uh, controller or fans. It, it's just, it's phenomenal. It, it is such a cool $30 unit or whatever it ended up being. If you ever gathered even a coat of dust, it's fine. Uh, if you got even a coat of dust. Uh, is that one that says computer cleaner on the side? Um, this one is the, co yeah, Compu Cleaner 2.0. You want to get the 2.0, man. <laughs> yeah, this is it. The next layer is a good one. Uh, just starting his channel, but he's in videos. Yeah, I've um I've talked to him actually quite a bit. Um, he 
he definitely has been making quality content. Uh, I've enjoyed it. I watched his recent one that was on the enclosure that he built uh, and his content's been really enjoyable. Yeah, 2.0. Um, I had a Shaper Pro on my wish list, didn't get one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Steve's uh, Nipix pliers wrench is a must. Oh, is that is that the, um, it's basically pliers that don't have teeth, right? I think he told me about that. Steve, Steve has definitely got some tools that I am incredibly jealous of. We were talking, um, we were talking crimps the other day because my my PA09s, I love these. Uh, I think they're great. However, mine are not the ones made in Taiwan or the, the ones that are higher quality are made in one of two locations and they're not the higher quality ones. Um, and the teeth on the 1.6s, something happened to them when I was crimping one time. And now when, it, when it's going to crimp the part that grabs the sleeving, uh, I would say three out of five times it it completely cuts off one of them. So now most of my crimps just have one grab on the uh, sleeving. So I can, I think I could go in there with like the magnifying glass that Dutch has and, and try to uh, like file it and, and see if I can correct it. But it that's bummed me out. And so now I'm looking at potentially alternative options. They've been great though. I, I still recommend them, but um, knowing that there's some that are higher quality and some that are not, I definitely do not have the uh, higher quality one. Okay, so now we want to make sure this magnet is going to attach to that and we will, oh, we will end up inserting it into here. So I think what I'll do is, is drop a dab of glue into this pocket, slide this, um, pop this in and then slide it. Oops, that won't work actually, will it? No. Okay, let's not complicate things. Let's just put some glue in and then drop this magnet in. All right, well, that sounds like a better idea. Okay. Just a little bit. No, that's such a big blob. So much glue. Okay, so we want this side sticking out. So this needs to go in like that. There we go. Ah. Okay. I'm gonna leave it like this to try to keep the glue from going back down to the switch. We do have another switch, but ideally I don't, I don't want to burn all the switches just for fun. <laughs> I bought the pairs, but I'd like to use them on other printers and other builds in the future, so. Nice, yeah, you'll be stoked on it. I was, I, I, I hadn't seen it in action. I just basically read reviews and was like, man, for this price compared to how much I've paid for compressed air, it, it seems awesome. And then once I got it for Christmas, uh, no, my birthday, uh, my parents came out and they, they had sent it through Amazon, but they're like, don't open it until we get out there. And so I, I fired it up when they were here in my room and we were, we were all like, oh my God, <laughs> this thing's awesome. Yeah, no more dust, no more dust in electronics or really anywhere. I mean, I use it for, <laughs> use it for all sorts of stuff. Um, you need a small syringe for glue. I do. You are absolutely right. Um, I have some, I have some syringes. Um, let's see if I can find them. I don't know if this probably would work better, but I use this for lubing the rails, uh, for linear rails. Um, this is actually almost too narrow. It, it's such a pain in the butt to try to squeeze it out of this this narrow of a syringe, but yeah, a syringe would probably be much better. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really risky doing it the way I'm doing it. JST are easy when you have the correct tools. Yeah, I, I agree. J, uh, JST and DuPont, I feel fairly confident with. Um, Microfit, I have only done once and it was for the umbilical mod on the on the V0. Um, sorry, dogs are going crazy. And um, I'm brain farting now because the dogs threw me off. Oh, it did not go well. I, I think I had the wrong tool for it. Uh, you can heat that up on the print bed before you want to squeeze some into the MGN carriage. That's a great idea. Time for evening coffee. <laughs> Got my monster. Uh, oh, are the, the Nipix are, okay, yeah, so Nipix are what I was talking about then. Those are, those are the ones that are smooth. Yeah, I need to put them on my list. Can somebody, anyone in the Discord that has an, a link accessible or just the model number, can you, can you post it and tag me in it? I want to add it to the, the wish list. There's a lot of cool tools out there and I just can't get them all. <laughs> but I, I at least like consolidating them into one place so that way when I'm like, I've got a little bit extra money and I want to get a tool that makes my life easier than I look there. Okay, so next up, all that's really left as far as this goes is the fan shroud portion. 
uh, which is going to be two wires coming from the top through these holes, then fold it out into the channels where we will then do the magnet thing again. So um, for this, I'm going to put the printer back on the table. Oh, I should probably not put this on the printer if I'm going to lift it. Uh, let's do this. Slide all this. Slide all this to the side. Uh, like this. Oh, we should also check to make sure that the um, switch has a uh, continuity after I did all this stuff to it. Oops. Let's see. Uh, it's real did a fantastic job on the shroud with clicky. Yeah. It, it's it's gorgeous. Uh, we'll show it off. Let's let's get a little. Uh, I mean, we'll see it in a second here, but it's. Are we not focusing? Should be. It's really nice. Uh, they don't sell yellow monster here anymore. Aaron got me three uh, sugar free options. So this is the white one. Um, it's okay. It's not bad. It's growing on me. Um, she got me a mango one, I think. And then she got me, I might need to sand. We'll see. I might need to sand a little bit of the, it looks like there's a tiny bit of super glue on the um, magnet. So Yeah, it's not really, I think it's because of the coating of glue. Hi, you leaving? Okay, I love you. Sorry, what, what are the three monsters you got me? There's the white one, the mango one, and what's the third one, the flavor? It doesn't say the flavor. Okay, the blue one. Oh man, the magnet is not, I love you. <laughs> okay, so that sucks. Pretty sure when the switch is engaged, yeah, there should be nothing. So I'm not sure if it's because there is. Yeah, we don't seem to have continuity, which sucks. Uh, it's normally open. It's normally open. Okay, there we go. Wait, am I wrong? Is it normally closed? No, it's normally open. It's weird, so it's kind of, it's certain areas are kind of working. I wonder if I sand it, if it's just that there's a little bit of coating on it that's causing it to. When I apply, I don't know if you can hear it. When I apply a little bit of pressure, uh, let me see. We're gonna roll with it. We're gonna see how it goes. I'll, I'll screw around with it a little bit later, but it's it's not, it doesn't seem great, but it still might be fine. And I can always take it out later and play around with it a little bit more if I need to, so. Uh, typically the NC and C connectors are opposite ends of the switch, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll roll with it and see. Worst comes to worst again, I print out another one and, oh, it's normally, normally closed? seems open. 
I don't know. Very confused. <laughs> uh, it's how it knows the probe's dog. Check my clicky. Uh, I get tone when not pressed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's that's what I thought. Is when it's when it's pressed, you shouldn't get a tone. So it seems really hit or miss. Um, I might need to push this a little bit further into the pocket. Um, yeah, I, we'll, we'll see. Let's work on the pet swing, um, and then I will play around with that a little bit more. Okay, let's get you guys up here. What's up, John? Happy almost New Year's, buddy. Uh, how was your Christmas? All right, let's go ahead and... Who's this guy on YouTube? <laughs> let's see. All right, I'm gonna put you guys on stilts because this tripod, as always, is a little too short. Let's see what's going on up top. Uh, oh, Alien, I don't know if I acknowledge that you said you were gonna run. Sorry, I'm distracted there. But uh, thank you, thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful New Year's. And uh, again, next Wednesday, I, I'll, I'll post it again. But next Wednesday, the stream will be on the Modbot channel because we are doing the uh, giveaway celebration 100K stream, which will be super fun. All right, let me change this to manual focus. Nope, that's not what we want to do. There we go. Okay, so we want roughly where my hand is to be in focus. That's the opposite of what we want. That looks pretty good. All right, uh, had a good Christmas. How about you? You will have a little one in the house. I know, I know. We're, uh, I think Aaron said 13 weeks away. It's just absolutely insane. Um, it was really good. Um, uh, Aaron's parents flew in on Sunday, on Christmas day. Uh, so we went and picked them up and then we, uh, we baked a ham uh, with mashed potatoes and um, it, was, it was really good, man. It was really nice. Yeah, it's gonna be nuts. We're, <laughs> I can't believe we're, we're, getting, we're getting closer. Okay, so uh, the way this works is there are two wires that I ran when I was um, basically building this tool head that are just extra. Um, so I'm going to just cut them, strip a little bit of wire, and then feed one into each end of these, uh, through these holes here. And then they will we'll bend them into these slots, and then we will press glue basically magnets in here as well. Um, and that's what is going to, once the magnets pick up that probe, it will then basically pass through and it'll be able to, it's crazy, it's magic. <laughs> the fact that it uses the magnets, it's such a simple concept, but such an amazing concept. The first time I heard of Clicky, I remember just like, that's genius. Whoever thought of using magnets um, to, because since they're conductive is incredible. Uh, did you prepare at least a little pack of diapers already have to be better? Yes, um, we do have, I think like 200 diapers. And I, I joked with Aaron, I was like, that'll probably last us like a week. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut off, let's cut off the ends of these wires. I'm hoping I gave myself enough wire for this. I think I did. This should feed down there. We'll need a little bit more slack. Ah! Oh, that's why that was... I don't know if I gave myself enough wire. Well, if I have to. So this wire looks like it's red and black. I was hoping that I'd just be able to pull it through. It doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to. I think that we technically have enough wire, but it's just so, it's gonna be so tight. Um, ah, there's enough wire. There, there's enough wire. I wonder if we should just try it. Yeah, I know. I have like exactly enough, but it's gonna be a huge pain in the butt. I, I swore that I gave myself a little extra wire. I don't know why when I'm pulling right now, I'm not getting any. Um... I wonder if it's just because of how tight I have some of this. Why? Why do I? Oh, okay, okay. There we go. 
No, we got it. We got it. There we go. Yes. <laughs> just kind of, just kind of finagle it a little. There we go. All right. <laughs> Try not to break these, uh, break these off. Uh, let's see. What if I say, uh, putty, putty in a plug makes sure moving the fan duct easy. Putty in a plug makes sure moving the fan duct easy. Huh. Okay, let's go ahead and strip these. Oh, you're saying putting them into a plug, like a quick disconnect plug versus doing this? Yeah, that probably is a, probably a better way of doing it as well. Let me give myself a little extra wire. <laughs> yeah, once I once I uh, started thinking about it, I was like, okay, you're probably saying put in a plug to make a movie. <laughs> At first, I was thinking, I was like, uh, putty, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I figured it out. Mystery, mystery has been solved. What keyboard did you go with? All right, so we're gonna shove the. I don't know how well I'll be able to show this. Um, maybe you guys can kind of see what's going on. Okay, so wire going through the hole. Wire not going through the hole. I don't know if I have, ah. let's see if I twist the wire. Okay, definitely need, no, that's actually fine, I think. Um, I'm wondering if, cause there's two holes. I'm, so there is a hole. Um, let me see if I can get this to focus. I can't because I put it in manual focus. I'm a goof. There we go. So there's two holes on this side, but on this side, there is a tiny hole coming out the corner right there, um, as well as a larger hole here. So I wonder if it's to give you the options to either have the entire wire come out and then fold it over or try to get it through that small hole. It'll be easier to fold it over, but I wonder if putting it completely underneath like that is the better route. Uh, some random Amazon brand, gotcha. I, I have, um, so I have a, my main keyboard on that computer is a Corsair, uh, I don't remember, it's been a long time, but it's a, it's really nice. But I actually picked up this like, it's Red Dragon from Amazon. Um, it's, it is not a bad keyboard. I've had it for a few years now and it's awesome. Uh, it's to it's to fold over and press the small braided wire into the small hole. Gotcha. Yep. That makes sense. Thank you, Dutch. Can we get this through the hole? I think I might need to expose some more wire on this. So I guess I could always chop it off if I have too much in the end. There we go. Okay. I don't know how well, let me see if I can bring this around like a little bit closer. Since this is on the bottom, we probably can drop the, drop this a little bit like that. Go in like that. Look at this, there we are. And you can really see my fingers when I. <laughs> okay. Uh, tripod, it's always beer 30 somewhere. Yeah, I just got a K3 mechanical keyboard and love it. Um. They, was that a Kickstarter keyboard? Someone just, I know on Twitter recently posted um, that they got a keyboard and I looked at it and I swear it was K something like that. And it was a, it was a Kickstarter um, or, or, or at least had at one point been a Kickstarter. Oh no, we're at the aggressive music. Okay, so that's one wire. 
Um, let me make sure that uh, the other magnets. Oh, there they are. Oops. All right, so I'm just going to place the magnets on the probe, oops, on the switch to make sure they're gonna be aligned properly. That's not what I wanted. I'm also gonna change the music. <laughs> Uh, someone remind me in 20 minutes, please, to start the uh, giveaway. There we go. Uh, I've moved to split ortholinear keyboards. Are those the, verti the vertical ones? Um, someone at my last job had one, and it looked insane, but he was really good with it, and it, and it was... Uh, I sat down in this chair once and like used it and although it was very funky for me and I certainly couldn't type as fast, uh, it was very comfortable. Okay. So this is the direction we want this. And I also, I also feel like I want to put a little bit more wire in this. <laughs> I think I'm going to. Just a little bit. Let's see if I can even do it. Um, let's see if I raise this. Uh, remember to do the giveaway. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> I, I should have known that was coming. All right, I'm placing a little bit of this in there. You guys won't really be able to see this because I'm, um, I'll show it after, but I just need a, uh, I can't grab the tripod right now. Hopefully that is good. It doesn't matter if the magnets stick out a little bit, right? I mean, I feel like the worst comes to worse. As long as they can still attach to each other and the gap isn't that big, then um, you would just adjust your offset. This one's definitely not perfectly flush, but I feel like it's as far as it's gonna go. Uh, hey, what's up, Nizo? Uh, my day is going good. I kind of just getting going. I honestly, this is primarily what I've done today was uh, got up, had some breakfast and um, prepped, like just took everything out. <clears throat> uh, I settled on getting a Keychron as they seem the only mainstream mechanical keyboard that really supports Mac OS. Huh, I don't think I've heard of Keychron. I'll have to, I'll have to check them out. Uh, Dutch says that's fine. Cool. Okay. One wire down. Let's do the second one. So start by shoving it into the pocket. Feels like that one went in nicer. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to... I wish you guys could see what I'm doing and not just see my hands. Let me zoom out a little. Maybe, maybe zooming in was not the move. Uh, there we go. Still can only see my hands. Okay, let's shove this like that. So I'm just folding the wires over into where the magnet is going to sit. At least attempting to. Um, let me grab, grab those pliers to, or tweezers, I guess. 
Okay. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut a little bit of wire to shove in there and then we'll glue it. And then there'll be one last one, but that one's easy because it's just a, <clears throat> it is just a alignment magnet. So there's no wire. And we just pray that this works. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Uh, Keytronic, now there's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Yeah, the only keyboards I've gotten are pretty much gaming, um, keyboards because that's what I was doing a lot on the computer was <laughs> at least previously was a bunch of games but not so much anymore okay oh, itchy nose because of my dogs drop some glue okay missed the hole All right, magnets. That did not go the way I wanted it to. That one's definitely sticking out more than the other one. Gosh. <laughs> biggest, all right, biggest thing I need to do is get less runny glue. I glue all over my freaking hand. And these magnets are not flush, which sucks. Like one's one's sticking out a little bit further. So I guess worst comes to worst, but if I have to, I can sand one of them down a little bit later on, but we'll see how this goes. Yeah, this uh this magnet, the glue, uh missed the hole, ran down the side, and then stuck to my fingers, and then got my fingers stuck to it. All right, let's get the last one in. You can see, I mean, look at my finger. It's, hold on, I guess you can't really. Yeah, you can see it, it's glossy, <laughs> the whole finger. <laughs> All right, let's get this last one in. And then I don't want to look at super glue for, I don't want to think about super glue. Okay, last one's in. Woo! <laughs> oh, choose the camera angle we want to see how you melt the trihorn. Okay, I will show you guys. <laughs> that sucked. That was not fun. I, I can tell you right now that I'm gonna have to sand the magnets. Um, one, to make it a little bit flatter, and two, to remove the layer of um, the layer of glue that's now, now on the outside of it. T10, is that the glue? I had an old Gillette shaving cartridge. It took the super glue off. Oh, really? All right, I'm gonna let it glue, or I'm gonna let it glue. I'm gonna let it dry for a second here. I'm gonna run to the garage and grab 
uh, some really fine grit sandpaper. And then I will be right back and then we will, we will continue. That was absolutely very messy. I'll be right back everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna wash my hands too. Ay, ay, ay. <sighs> Let's hide stuff while he's gone. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, let's see. I got just a little 220 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna do a couple passes on the outside for now. I'm probably gonna have to do more because again, one of the magnets is um, it's definitely, it, it, it could be that I just put more wire into that one. I just want to at least give it the best chance of working as possible and having super glue in between them is not going to help with making them conductive. Hey, what's up, Thomas? Okay, we're getting we're getting through. Yeah, if I, again, my only recommendation, everything I think has been fine, but my recommendation is just don't use thin, <laughs> thin super glue. That is all. All right, I think that's okay for now. All right, will these, Where's the, where's the switch? Where's the switch? Where'd you go, buddy? Don't. Oh, do that to me. Oh my gosh, it's sticking. <laughs> it fell underneath the printer and was sticking to the underside of the electronics. So I'm glad I, glad I checked. So let's see, do we stick? Yay. Yeah, that is not, whew. That's gonna need some sanding. We'll see how this goes. I, I'm not entirely confident that it's just going to work right now without more, uh, without some love after this. I'm gonna have to we'll probably get this screw out for a little while, but we'll see. Um, I was using. It was like that on my switch wire too when I installed it. It was one of the magnets um, was really at an angle and it took me probably like 20 to 30 minutes of sanding it uh, and then I was able to get it working and it's worked perfect since. So it's kind of a pain the first time, but once you get it set up, it's you shouldn't really ever have to screw it again. Okay.
Okie dokie. Hey, nice. Thanks for renewing your membership. Seven months. That's crazy. That is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank, thank you very much for the two years. Nice. Uh, because you know. Uh, first clicky, I built the magnets were not even enough. Caused the edge of the pro body to hit the bed before. Uh, yeah, I, I have a slight concern with that right now as well. I don't think that will happen. Um, we, can, we can check really quick here. Regardless, I'm going to be doing some sanding. I don't even know. Yeah, this will be high enough. No, we're clicking. I don't know if you can hear it, but put my mic close to it. See between the Let's see it right there. Nope. Right there. Yeah. So it does uh that's at least a positive, but it is clicking before hitting the switch, so it's not that crooked. Okay, let's see. As far as alignment or as far as mounting the dock, uh Dutch, you said back. Is there a specific spot that it's recommended to mount it? Like, um, let's see. Back center, maybe? Well, one concern I have is with how far it sticks out. How is that going to grab it? How is... It doesn't seem like it is capable of grabbing it. Um, the shroud hits that frame way before it would hit the dock. Uh, just put it in the most back left where it can reach. Oh! That's right, it can get, duh. <laughs> okay, so basically as far back, I don't know, can it even reach there? Did I print the extender piece? I don't know. Um, let me, I can look in the, This is what I've got as far as parts. So those are the ducts. Uh, I don't think I saw an extender piece. One second here, let me see what Scott's got. Oh. That makes a lot more sense. I don't know that I have that. Is that in the, um... Is that, in... I didn't see it. Where is that piece? I can check, but I don't, I don't recall seeing that piece anywhere. Let's see, BL touch mounts, BL touch mounts. Pensioners? Nope, I definitely don't have that piece. Um, that's a bummer. Uh, let's see if I can find it really quick. Pro, these are all configuration files. Why don't I see that anywhere? Uh, it, I didn't see it in that folder. I'll pull it up again. Um, well, let's go through. Let's go through it on the website really quick, or on the um, on the server. Okay. So.
Okay, I don't think so. It's just the docks. I, I don't think it's in the... Uh, I don't think it's in the configurator. Or maybe it is. Maybe I... One second. Let me really quick here. Oh, so that's, that is exactly what it is. I misunderstood then. I thought, yeah, I definitely goofed. Okay, I need to print it out then. Um, what is the, what is the size uh, needed for this guy? It kind of, I feel like the small one's probably enough if we're doing back left corner. Yeah, the small one. Okay, cool. All right, let's go. Should be able to print like that. That's fine. It's range, range. Oh yeah, I'll get the giveaway going in two seconds. I just wanna get this sent off to the printer really quick. Uh, this is generic ABS. Should be fine, slot one. Yeah, should be good to go. Okay, we'll get it fired off. Kind of a bummer though, because uh, I don't know if we probably won't be. You specify each one above. I don't think I have it turned on right now in the garage. Okay, let's get the giveaway going. Then I'm gonna run to the garage, turn on the printer, because I don't think it's turned on. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see if there's anything else we can do in the meantime. Oh, it does look like the X1 is connected. Oh, it is connected. Sync materials, yes. That is not, that is generic, yes. Oh, there we go. It is ABS. Why are you saying it's not? Device. Edit. It should be ABS. Okay, let's try that again. So it was just telling me that I didn't have the right filament mapped. Okay, there we go. ABS, yada yada, bed leveling, it's fine, cool. Okay, that looks good. All right, let me really quickly get this going, the giveaway. Uh, the longest one is what I'm using with the stock. Oh, interesting. Okay, I will, I'll start with the smallest because it seems like it will fit in that corner. Um, if not, then I'll print it out. I'll, I might end up having to finish up um, the testing off stream and then the next stream we do after the 100,000 subscriber giveaway, I will, go through my config and go through the parts that I ended up using. So that way anyone that wants to follow can, but I, um, I for some reason didn't realize that there was an extender piece. Okay. Let me get the giveaway going. Uh, where are we? Giveaway form. And make sure I cleared everybody from last week. Uh, I did. Okay. Short URL, copy. There we go. It is not letting me pin it in chat. Why are we not working? Hmm. 
It's weird. Let me, um, why is it not letting me pin? I'm gonna refresh the stream. Hey, if you have not smacked the like button, please do. We got 80, wait, live streaming isn't available. Did we lose internet again? Can you guys hear me? Cause it's not, um... weird on the back end of YouTube. Um, oh, that's why. Okay. Interesting. Somehow it switched between the Modbot Army channel and the other, uh, and the Modbot channel. Okay, let's see if I can get back to where I was. Here we go. That's why it wasn't letting me pin it because it, I, it didn't think I had the permissions to pin it. There we go. All right, we're back. All right, pop out chat. Um, let me pin that message really quick. Um, I can't even see the message. All right, let's try this again. There's the link. Pin message. There we go. Really weird. I don't know why it would have uh, switched on me, but. There we go. Okay, awesome. So let's, I'm trying to think in the meantime. So if we can't use the dock right this second, what can we do? I guess we can start playing around with the actual config. Um, let me pull this off the side here. There we go. All right, so let's plug in, let's plug in the printer and turn it on. Hey, G Funny's in the house. I, I, um, I meant to send you a message yesterday, dude. Uh, thank you very much for the gifted, uh, gifted membership. I, I meant to shoot you a message yesterday. The, this little, this Makita driver, um, this was a gift from G funny. Wait, here it is. There we go. This was a gift from G funny for my 30th birthday. And I use this thing all the time. I, I meant to send you a message the other day when I was building a piece of furniture with it and just the amount of time it saved me. But I, I freaking love that thing, man. I, I have a bunch of tools now um, that I've got from uh, just stuff I'm doing out in the garage, but something about the compact size of it, it has like a, a crazy amount of power for its size. And the batteries are so small, which, I like I like all the uh, Ryobi stuff I've been getting, but just for small stuff inside, it is awesome. It, it is Milwaukee. No, wait, did I say did I say Makita? I meant Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is absolutely awesome. I'm I'm, I'm gonna print out a mount for it uh, and mount it right here uh, along with the charger to this little piece of furniture I got in. But it, it is great. <laughs> <laughs> whatever all right uh we are all connected let's save and restart <clears throat> uh the giveaway is a spool of polymaker filament yep uh shipped anywhere in the world it's any pla abs asa or petg uh, except for the abrasives or like the specialty exotic filaments okay so according to turtle um we need to Add some stuff. Uh, upload all the configuration files into the clicky directory. So we're supposed to create a clicky directory and I guess we will call it clicky. Bam. Let's open that, oops, open that up. And then we need to upload, upload file. Uh, downloads pretty sure let me see I'm pretty sure it is 50 zip oh shoot I didn't mean nope <laughs> I should extract it one second extract 
Extract all. Extract, yes. Replace the files. Okay, so all of these folders, or all these files should be going into here. There we go. So these are all provided in the 0G GitHubs. I, or, uh, yeah, the 0G Discord, sorry. Um, if you go under, I showed it earlier, but if you go under Community Mods and then the clicky Trihorn, um, all this is in a zip file that Turtle uploaded. Fun fact, Ryobi and Milwaukee are owned by the same... I actually... Someone told me that. Um, someone did tell me that, which is which is funny. I have the DeWalt with the rotating handle. Can you use it uh, inline or like a gun? Nice. Okay, so we've got that in place. Then it says, uh, add include clicky to your printer config file. Okay. So we're gonna go to our printer config file. And then I think somewhere in here, yeah, I'll just do it up top. So I've got include mainsail.cfg and I have never done a subdirectory, but I'm assuming that just copy pasting it, oops, like that. So basically it's saying include in clicky folder, clicky probe.cfg. So that should allow us to reference, um, reference those files in that folder. Comment out your remove, comment out or remove your current safe Z home section. Do we have a current safe Z home section? I could just do a quick search, right? Um, let's see, control F, safe. That's not how you spell safe. Okay, I don't think there is a current safe Z home, so we should be okay with that. Uh, searching from a BL touch, move the BL touch section, uh, and then, looks like i don't think there's a probe section at all right now uh because this is the stock ender 5. uh this is that roby is listed as a company as a company 58 on the tokyo stock exchange huh where where um so is ryobi and milwaukee where are they based out of like where they're not, they're not US companies, is it, are they Chinese companies? Yeah, there's no probe section in the stock setup. Uh, so we're gonna copy and paste this entire probe section and we will place it, we'll place it under Z, I feel like it makes sense. Check your board pin out, this is an example pin. Um, so our probe is going to be going into our I would imagine where our Z, our Z end stop is, right? That seems right to me because we shouldn't need a Z end stop. My understanding is that before X and Y will home, then that way they know their coordinates. And before Z homes, it'll grab the probe and then bring it out and probe Z for homing it. Uh, this is just still the stock this is still a stock reality. I think it's the 4.2.2. I'm almost positive that's what we're gonna do is, well, let me see actually, let's see. Yeah, I'm nearly positive that's what we're gonna do. So we will change, um, where did I just see it? In stop pin, so that should be PA7. Like that and then we are going to completely replace our stepper z and stop pin okay so it looks like This needs to be on the same line, I think. Can I leave that blank if I go probe Z virtual and stop? Oops. Position min negative 15. Okay, so there's no 
kind of splicing these two together here. Um, position max 300. That's fine. Uh, homing speed 12. There's no homing speed value, so we can use that. I guess these values are sort of up to you. You can adjust them. It looks like Turtle's saying that he's actually running his first homing speed at 20. So I'd rather start slower. And if it's working fine, we can bump up the homing speed for basically when it goes. Um, I think to, uh, license use Roby name for hand tools for the five pro it is. You need a safety home with XY in your center of the bed and virtual end stop for stepper Z. Uh, Roby brand is Ameri uh, in America is operated has been operated as a subsidiary of Tektronic Industries, a Hong Kong. Co oh, interesting. Okay, I think I added homing speed values. Gotcha. Okay, so I think that this is okay for right this second, other than us having to adjust where our dock is going to be later on. So. Um, this hasn't changed. The enable pin looks blank. Um, and I'm imagining that's because we're using the probe Z virtual end stop. Uh, this value I added uh, min negative 15 humming speed. I added humming speed I added. This is all the same End stop pin should be gone, right? We shouldn't have that at all. I feel like because it, it can't we can't double reference it we're referencing it down below under probe so i'm assuming we need to get rid of that you can check if your probe is triggering uh you can check if your probe is triggering manually mounting it oh you're right yeah i can okay let's see let's see that really quick here and then i want to go under clicky uh macros probe no I'm assuming it, it says that there's a new safe, uh, there's a new safe Z home in the clicky CFG file. So that should be uh, clicky macros, clicky probe. No, I just looked here. Where? Specifics? Nope, that's blank. Variables. Where is the safe home file? I don't see it. Uh, bedtime, but I can't leave without greeting you from Austria. Ludius, thank you very much for stopping by, man. That's, that's awesome. Have a wonderful night. I hope you have a great night's sleep. Um, so yeah, that's just the macro. Those are macros. Weird. I don't entirely know. All right, let's restart this, see if it throws an error. It is. End stop pin in section Z must be specified. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Let's go machine, printer.cfg. I'm gonna delete the things that are in, let's see, so end stop pin, That doesn't seem right. See the end stop entry to end stop pin probe Z. Position end stop is not valid in section stepper Z. Okay, so that was my goofing. Um, position end stop is not valid in section stepper Z. Okay, so I deleted the wrong thing then. Um, I think I've got the first issue figured out. Let me quickly go, I should be able to grab it really quickly here. It was under, um, let's see, Clipper, Config Repository. 
I'll just grab the default value again. Oh, Ender 5 Pro. There we go. What was the value it said that I needed that I goofed on? Position end stop is not valid in section stepper Z. Position end stop. Remove position end stop. Gotcha, so I already had it in place. I don't need it with this. Existing command bed mesh calibrate not found in G-code macro. That is under Is that down here? No, so that's in the folder. I think what I'm going to do is start without the, I'll add the macros later. The only folder we're actually referencing, no, we're not, we're referencing all of this. Man, this is, I, the other printer, I'm pretty sure I did it all in one file instead of different files. It's probably because these are not being included, so it's not able to call them. Nope, it wants me to... <laughs> Why? Requires Clipper configure. Oh, gotcha. That's why. Okay, so that one's fine. Required requires for four Z motors to. Okay, so these don't. We don't need either of these right now. All right, try it again. Screw tilt adjustment not found. Why is it? Nope, that's not right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Okay. So you're saying attach the probe and see if we can see it triggering under a machine. Shouldn't it show triggered by default if it's uh doesn't look like it's triggering. Yeah, I should show triggered, right? Does that mean my logic is inverted? That's a good point. That is a good point. I don't think I swapped over the wires. <laughs> There's so many things to think about. <laughs> yeah, I saw the ZN stop. I need to swap them over. You're right. It's always something obvious. <laughs> I'd like to blame it on the fact that I'm live streaming, but I think that even if I wasn't live streaming, I would have done the same thing. And then I would have looked around and been like, oh, duh. 
He's still running the old thing. Okay, um, zoom out a little bit. Uh, if you have not entered into the giveaway, it is uh, pinned in chat and it will be live for like another, let's say seven more minutes and then we'll, we'll draw a winner. It's too big. Thank you, Dutch. <laughs> You've saved me a handful of times. <laughs> Good or bad? I appreciate it. I mean, the reality is a lot of times when I'm doing things, even off live stream, I'm like, ah, I goofed. Like, it just, it just happens. But, but it is fun to show because there's definitely been a handful of times where I've done a, a like a whoopsie on live stream and then someone later on has commented like months later and they're like, I'm so glad that you messed up on that part because I did the same thing and I wouldn't have realized it had you not corrected yourself later on. So <laughs> it all, I feel like it all helps out in the end. Okay, so I gotta be careful with this because there is a fan. Okay, so this naked wire or this unplugged wire should be our new Z limit switch. And as far as on here, where is our existing Z switch? Um, let's see, X, Y. Ah, it's the only one. I can turn this a little bit. It's our only one that still has glue on it. Uh, hopefully I can just pull it off, but if not, I'll use some IPA. Nope, that's being a jerk. Oh, I don't know if you guys remember last week, but I um, I kept having to go get ear swabs for the IPA. Aaron came back and got me a little pack of ear swabs. <laughs> so, now I don't have to run. If I can open it. There we go. All right, a little dab of IPA on that port. Longer BL touch cable is six inches too short. Ooh, did I power it down? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, power cable should not be plugged in. Yeah, power cable's unplugged. Thank you for saying that though. I'll always take a, I'll always take an extra reminder to power it down because you never know. But yeah, I, I unplugged it and switched it off. Okay. Wow, this one has really been a jerk. There we go. Okay, so that's unplugged. Now we are plugging in our new switch. I'm just gonna leave this wire for now. Um, I might end up pulling it later on, but in case, just in case, I'm going to leave the wire in. Ah. That's frustrating. Um, oops, I dropped. Oh, again. Um, there was, the BL Touch that we sold at Matter Hackers had the world's smallest um, cable on it. It was insane. Um, and we didn't sell an extension cable for a long time. So everyone that got it like had to solder longer wires or, or crimp, crimp their own setup. Um, yeah, it's kind of irritating. I wish that all of them just defaulted with, with, um, this is, with longer wires. Such an awkward thing to this panel. Okay. Oh. Once I get one of these on, it'll be easy, but it is very awkward working against gravity. All right. No. There we go. All right. Now it's easy. Hmm. Woo. Hey, what's up, uh, Domenico? Wait, sit around. Do you go by Dom or do you go by your full name normally? Dom is much easier to say, but if you go by full name, I'll stick with full name. Uh, even duct tape can't fix that. <laughs> what printer? Uh, what printer are you putting the feel touch on, Lisa? Oh my God, this panel. There we go. Okay. 
start the third screw and then I'll find. Um, I'm going to, two more, two minutes left on the giveaway. If you haven't entered in, uh, it's pinned in chat. I don't even know if I should be fully seating these now that I think about it. I might have to, um, one second, let me see if I can find that screw that I dropped. And then I'm just gonna flip the printer over. Where did you go? There we are. Okay, yeah, let's at least get them in so I don't lose them. Um, and then we will turn this on and see. So if I'm gonna have to open it back up, there's no, there's no point in me fully seating these guys. I'm just gonna flip it back over. Let's make sure there's nothing pinched down there. Everything looks okay. Okay. Power cable on. Let's do the drawing. Um, and then we will see if the switch is being detected. Uh, I do I do go with my Dom online for friends, but if I'm working through companies, I'm making these my full name. They can make an effort. <laughs> is is it Domenico or D Dome I just I feel like I'm not saying it right. Or is it just like Dom Domenico? <laughs> I received the kit for the Enterfi Plus printer just before Christmas. Trying to find time to get it all done uh, in one go if I can. Wait, Andrew, are you doing the Mercury conversion to it? Do not enter the giveaway. It's for my birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, nice. The Ender, the BL Touch didn't power on, so new wire. Oh, interesting. Is BL Touch so popular you just hear a lot of complaints about it? Or is it a real pain to use? I, I don't know. I don't really answer that, Ted. <laughs> I um I haven't used it in Clipper ever, so I, I really don't know how it is, the implementation in Clipper. Uh, it was in Marlin when I used it before, and it wasn't terrible, but it definitely took me a little while to get used to. Do Da, well, that would be Do, Domenico. Domenico, yeah, that sounds right. I don't know if it is. Okay, let's let's do this. I'm ranting long enough. Unpin from chat, remove. We have got, how many entries? 86, nice. All right. All right, let me get let me get a sip of this monster here. I think um, phoneticizing it for your accent would be Do, Domenico. Domenico. Okay. If you're okay with me calling you Dom, I'm going to stick with Dom because I just know I'm going to screw it up. Hey, Caitlin, I hope you had a great Christmas. Uh, Brian, all right, everyone, good luck to everybody. As always, massive thank you to Polymaker. They are awesome and allow us to do a giveaway every single week. Uh, if you haven't tried out their filament, it's amazing. Uh, this entire build is all using their ABS, and I've used a ton of their ABS, uh, but I've used also their PLAs and PETGs, and it's all really, really nice filament. So uh, if you are interested in testing out their materials, there is a link in the description. It does support the channel and lets them know that we sent uh, some people over there. So good luck to everybody. I will, wh whoever, whoever does win, I will send you an email later on today with just a form you need to fill out and it'll submit to Polymaker and then they will get your filament shipped off. So, all right, three, two, one, good luck. Uh, it's more than fine with friends, online or IRL, call me Dom. ID. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's like how me too, like, well, I guess Dan and Daniel's a little bit easier, but I go by all the above. Hey, Death Cube. That's a new, new, uh, new winner, I think. Congratulations. Let's go, let's go full, get a little bit of confetti action, a little bit of air horns. Congratulations, Death Cube. I will, there you are. Uh, so yeah, I will send you an email later on today and you'll just basically put in the filament that you want. Um, I think it's typically to skew your shipping address and then uh, they'll get that shipped off to you. And uh, again, the, if you haven't partake, uh, partaken before, it's any PLA, ABS, PETG, or ASA, but just not the exotic ones with like carbon and stuff like that. But any color, uh, any color should be fine. All right. 
Let's see. Growing up in North London, I had a lot more colorful nicknames. <laughs> All righty. Let's see if this... Uh, let's go desktop, I guess, probably, right? Uh, desktop. Lost communication with the MCU. Yeah, that makes sense, because I unplugged it. Will it recognize our limit switch? It says open, which makes me think that it's still not working correctly. Oh no, that works. All right, releasing it, refreshing it, holding it down. Let's go, let's go. All right, that's a win. That is a win because the, um, the continuity was questionable at best when I was checking it with the multimeter. Uh, and I certainly wasn't, I was not convinced that my wiring job was going to work either. So the game plan is, um, so next week we will be doing the, uh, Zarin says, heading to bed, still sick, have a great night. Hey, thank you for stopping by, especially with you not feeling good, man. I hope you feel better. And uh, hopefully by this weekend for New Year's, you're feeling a lot better so you can at least enjoy your, you know, enjoy the last day of the year. So, uh, thanks for hanging out. But, um, yes, the game plan is next week will be the stream on the Modbot channel with Aaron. It's, I have no idea how long it's going to be. There's, there's a lot of giveaways and we're going to try to go quickish, but it'll at least be a couple of hours. You do not have to be there for the entirety of it. You just need to stop by. And the game plan is, um, every 10 giveaways will open up. So like we'll basically pull all the entries do 10 giveaways, and then anyone that's coming in and entering between those 10 will get added after that. So you will at least be able to be in for some of them. Um, and then the following week after that, we were potentially gonna be starting a 2.4 build um, while I'm figuring out all the stuff with this in Hydra. But we might, we might do a chill stream before and just play around clicky and I can show you the stuff that I've done because Basically what's left is um, the extension piece is printing right now. Uh, let's see. Let me see if it's printing. It should be printing. Oh, I, I goofed. All right, well, it's not printing. It started doing the scan and I'm looking at this right now. That is not the right filament. So I'm gonna print this out, get this wired up but yeah and then and then i will likely have a like, kind of a hangout stream with this and we'll take a look at where i mounted it what the configuration looks like that i needed to get it working um and kind of just a chill stream before we start that but we are going to be doing more more streams on this uh because we're going to be installing an ac bed um the mix six bed the hydra which is the three lead screw bed tramming setup that's going to be nuts and then we're converting it to the Manta M8P with electronics enclosure. It'll be it'll be a cross of some stuff I'll be doing offline and some stuff we'll be doing on stream that I'll be showing uh, because it's gonna take a long time and I just I can't do the entire thing on stream. It would it would take us forever. I have to be able to hone in a little bit. Um, I'm very excited for the 2.4 build. I, I need to reach out. That's uh, sponsored by LDO and Fabrico. We've been talking about it for months now, so I, I'm super super excited for that as well. Hydra is awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, I like to think that Aaron is off camera aiming a gel blaster. Yeah, I know in case he says anything she doesn't like. It's pretty accurate. Now, normally uh, she's sitting on the couch watching the stream actually, but uh, her parents are in town. So she went out with her mom to grab some um, uh, groceries. I'm actually cooking. I'm gonna take a break after this, probably screw around with this a little bit. And then I'm making my homemade chili tonight, which it's pretty bomb. I don't want to toot my own horn. It's not my own recipe, so like, I, there's no horn to toot. It's a recipe online, but uh, it's an Instapot chili that takes about an hour, roughly, and it is phenomenal. So if anyone has an Instapot and is looking for a, a good chili recipe, I, I'm your guy. I, I, it's a killer recipe, so. Um, everyone was copying the 2.4 build that I didn't start yet. Zombie, when are you going to start it? You, you were talking about that before the Rook, before, oh uh, gosh, there was another printer that you did or were working on. You, you've been talking about it for a while, man. Um, chili is fire. Uh, how's she doing baby wines if you don't mind me asking? No, not at all. Uh, she'll be on stream next week and I'm sure she has no problem um, answering, but uh, she's doing pretty good. 
she's got like her stomach has gotten very very big i mean we're only 13 weeks out now and so i think that like like top and bottom wise it's expanded as much as it can but like her ribs have been hurting because i think the baby is now up in the rib area um and she she gets like some pain so she she's i think she's doing awesome uh especially all things considering but like she's she'll be excited when she no longer has to carry a, a small human you know uh but yeah all things considered i think she's doing really well and it's much better than the first trimester first trimester was super rough because she was just nauseous all the time and it was it was not fun and there's nothing i could do it, it was it was really rough um post the recipe on discord okay i will post it in chat and in discord uh, for everybody uh don't judge the recipe until you try it because there are uh there's a, a fish oil in the chili recipe i don't exactly know what in the grand scheme it contributes to it but add it it's really good uh, and there's actually um, uh, chocolate, like um, non-sweetened, I think, cacao, right? Like there's the, what you call it, non-sweetened. It's in there too, and it's it's really good. Um, let's see here. Instapot. Chili recipe. Yeah, Erin craves this. Uh, since I first made it, uh, she has me make it multiple times a year. Like she'll just look over at me and be like, I need it. Uh, I think this is it right here. Let's see. This looks like the, yep, yep. This is it. So I'll post it. Let's see. Yeah, 90% chocolate, yep, yep. So there's the recipe. Um, I'm sure you can replicate it and not in a pressure cooker uh, if you just uh, mo uh, modify the time of it. But I'm telling you, man, like it is just so freaking good. And I, I do double batches now, so that way we freeze. I'm posting it in the live stream Discord as well. Um, so, all right, <laughs> before we end the stream shortly here, I'm gonna take a second to look over a few things for anyone that's actually interested in this, in this, uh, this rant of chili. So the things that I've done are let's see mm -mm. yeah gotta do the fish sauce uh we always do some fresh chopped jalapenos on top with shredded cheese um yep onion garlic yum deglazing yum all right let me get to the recipe on the bottom okay so the things that we do um always add brown sugar in the end that little bit of sweetness is super yummy the things that we don't do are there's a few optional things um I don't see it i think apple apple cider vinegar is an option to use we don't use that but everything else on here looks pretty much on par with what we do and it, it is it is really good man um the only warning i have is the level of chili powder that it calls for makes it kind of spicy so if you're not really big on spice just just like have uh have that ingredient A piece of cinnamon sounds really good as well it kind of makes sense it mellows out some stuff uh, it's like adding salt to coffee to cut the bitterness without adding sweetness. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. That makes sense then. Yeah. It, it's not a lot of chocolate. It's, um, uh, where is it? Unsweetened cocoa powder. So it's not sweet at all. And it's just a teaspoon of it. So I do two teaspoons of it. Very, very little. Same with the fish sauce. Uh, well, fish sauce, I do four tablespoons. Um, the fish sauce smells funky. I love fish and sushi. And I think the fish sauce smells funky, but I put it in there anyway because it called for it, and it, it is great. Whatever it's doing in, in that in the aroma or in the, uh, in the in the taste is really really good. I don't use my instant pot anymore. I'm mostly using the Ninja Speedy. I haven't heard of that. I know that I know that instant pot has a air fryer instant pot combo, but we honestly mostly use the instant pot for um, to take frozen chicken to ready to eat chicken in like 15 minutes if we're doing like tacos or something quick chili and then um gosh that's primarily what we use it for now honestly chocolate cuts the burn from the chili powder giving it more mellow taste interesting uh, it looks good it's a shame that i'm allergic to a lot of ingredients used for the chili oh no sorry <laughs> dan i know i know i'm hungry too I, I, <laughs> love this food lovers channel but also uh builds <laughs> once the holidays pass we won't talk about food quite as much it's during the holiday time uh you know, there's more, there's more exciting food stuff going on, but I think we're going to end it. Well, basically we got the clicky wired in. It's working fine. The only thing left is to set up the mount. So that way it's able to slide off of its attachment point. Uh, and then configuring, making sure that the macro and that the placement of the probe dock is set correctly in the, um, in the configuration. So when we do have another video on this, I will show exactly 
you know, whether that, that smaller dock worked or whether I needed to go with the longer one that Scott mentioned and the placement of it, anything else kind of weird that um, comes out of it all. But I, I'm very happy that the probe is working because if, if someone had said, I need you to put money on whether this probe's gonna work first try, I would have bet against it because of the fact that the continuity just was not reading very well and that they just got super glue everywhere. So I'm very, very proud. How's this watch truck <laughs> printing? Uh, it's going great, zombie. It's going absolutely awesome. Uh, we're turning to a 3D printer stream to instant pot stream. Yeah, it happens all the time. Anyone that hangs out here often knows, like, we, we 3D print, but we also hang out and do lots of random stuff, um, which I enjoy. It, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so anyways, I, I think um, I think we'll end it on that note. I was going to do a shorter stream today, so that way I can hang out with family and uh, it's going to take a little bit easier. But thank you, everyone, for hanging out, for liking, for keeping me company, for pointing out my uh, wins and my mistakes. And uh, I hope everyone has a safe, healthy, and awesome New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. I'm super excited for 2023. I've got just an insane amount of stuff planned out. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone has an awesome weekend. And uh, yeah, safe. And uh, again, I'll, I'll mention it. I know I've mentioned it like four times in the stream, so I apologize to anyone that's been here the entire time. But next Wednesday is going to be the live stream on the main channel for the 100,000 subscriber celebration. It'll be a ton of fun. I will post it at least once or twice on like Twitter and Discord. Uh, so that way, if you want to be there, you are able to be there. But yeah, I hope everyone has an awesome rest of your day. Enjoy your food. I'm sure half of you are now hungry and are going to go raid your pantry or your kitchen. And uh, until next time, bye everybody. Thanks again.